Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're staying in the Gettysburg Campaign and going to talk about the Battle of Middleburg, located in Loudoun County, Virginia, between Union General Alfred Pleasanton and his men from the Army of the Potomac, and Confederate General Jeb Stuart and his army in Northern Virginia, from the 17th to the 19th of June, 1863. General Stuart had camped the largest portion of his forces at Middleburg, intent on acting as the main sortie force to counter any Union push into any of the three gaps. Little did he realize that Union General Pleasanton had ordered Colonel Alfred N. Duffy, a French-born Union officer, to take his 280 men known as the 1st Rhode Island Cavalry and investigate Middleburg itself. Colonel Duffy and his men had slipped past Confederate Colonel John R. Chambliss's brigade that was acting as a picket force and into the thoroughfare gap itself on June 17th. The Confederate picket forces that did spot the Union scouts could not believe that the Union would send such a small force by itself, and instead they believed that Duffy was leading a large vanguard from the Army of the Potomac. This resulted in those Confederate units that did spot Duffy to not engage. The hesitation this caused allowed Duffy to arrive just west of Middleburg and there he encountered Confederate 9th Virginia Cavalry around 4 p.m. that day. Confederate General Stuart was caught off guard, not anticipating the Union forces appearing so close. Canceling his socializing that evening, Stuart pulled his men out of Middleburg, anticipating a large Union army and ordering Confederate General Beverly Robertson to slow down what was believed to be a larger force. Obeying his orders, Robertson attacked Duffy and found out almost immediately how small Duffy's forces were. Pushing Duffy and his Union troops out of the area, and into Confederate Colonel Chambliss' brigade, resulting in fighting that scattered and routed the 1st Rhode Island Cavalry, resulting in more than 200 prisoners and shattering Duffy's forces. In the end, Duffy was only able to return to his headquarters with four officers and 27 enlisted men. The afternoon and the evening of June 18th remained quiet as Stuart awaited for the remaining Union forces, not anticipating that Colonel David McMurdy Gregg would be leading a division slamming into Confederates Colonels Robertson and Chambliss' brigades. The fighting became intense both on and off horse as both cavalries several times unmounted their horses and fought on foot. Using his greater number, Union Colonel Gregg pushed Stuart back beyond Kirk's Branch Stream. Meanwhile, catching Stuart off guard completely was Union General John Buford and his division as Buford swung north and attacked the area around the pothouse, pushing back Confederate Colonel William Grumble Jones's brigade. Realizing how well defended the area was, Union Colonel Gregg requested reinforcements and received Union General Judson Kilpatrick's two regiments, and the combined force began to advance again. Both sides were fighting in record summer heat, hitting almost 100 degrees. The fighting continued for some time, with additional Union and Confederate forces receiving reinforcements. Eventually, with the 2nd and 6th U.S. Cavalry regiments gaining ground, Stuart was forced to retreat. But he was in luck. Union General Pleasanton was so risk-averse that he wouldn't commit his forces to chase the Confederate retreat. Casualties were not recorded in complete detail, but between the two days, the Union seemed to have lost 250 men, including 200 prisoners during the June 17th skirmish with Duffy's 1st Rhode Island Cavalry, and an additional 16 killed, 46 wounded, and 37 missing on June 19th, resulting in a total of 349 casualties. General Stewart claimed a much smaller loss, recording only 40 men that were killed, wounded, or missing. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.